Section 5 of the Thrill Book, Volume 1, Number 4. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Ben Tucker. Down the Coast of Shadows by Pearly Poor Sheehan. Chapter 5. The Riddle. Dawn came up over Lower Manhattan, as sweetly as over a land of meadows and woods. In fact, there was a smell of meadows and woods in the air. Down here, where streets were ancient and dark, and the high buildings soared and no flower had blossomed for a hundred years, it was as if this quarter of the town were like every other human thing. Not all good, not yet all bad, old to the shocks of misery and violence, yet maintaining through it all some gift of the primitive innocence, something of the child. "'It reminds me of some of the things that I've heard since I joined the force,' said Cavanaugh. There's many a man serving time up the river now, who was a kind father and a faithful husband. Crime was his business. That was all. Maybe old J.C. is like that. Making money by ways that are dark. Doing good on the sly. There's something in that, too, said Swan. I know of a number of acts of kindness that he's done, all since his brother's death, as if, as if you might say he'd been trying to make up for his brother's being dead. And yet... Off and on, Swan and Kavanaugh had talked the morning hours away ever since they had watched together, while old Jacob Witcherly ghosted off through the darkness of those lonely and deserted downtown streets. Kavanaugh's beat was a short one. It centered about the Witcherly building. To and fro went Kavanaugh, like some human pendulum covering his beat, ringing up his box. But each time he passed this way, he had stopped, and he and the Swede night watchman had talked about the amazing visit of the night, and each time, each had felt that the other was holding something back to balance, so to speak, that which he himself was holding back. Said Swan to himself, Now what did the old man mean when he said that he did it with that heavy gold cane of his? Said Kavanaugh to himself, Wurra, wurra, what the devil is in that message he's given me to deliver? And why do my eyes take in that one word, killed? We all have sins on our conscience, said Kavanaugh responsive to Swan's suggestion that yet there were things in Witcherly's career that needed explanation. "'Why did he break out like that all of a sudden in a rage?' asked Swan. "'It reminds me,' said Kavanaugh, "'of an old gentleman I once found strolling about one dark night in the darkest part of Pearl Street. He had just tried a door. "'Come out of that,' I says. "'Tail with you,' he says, and he tried to cut me with his knife. It wasn't the knife that scares me, though. It's the look in his face. I was younger then.' So it's a fight you want, and I hits him with my stick. Down he goes. I kneels beside him. He wasn't so badly hurt. I was, though. Such a face, such a smile. He comes to himself. He says, Officer, where am I? What has happened? As gentle as a lamb. And him that had the face of a fiend two minutes before. Who was it? That's what I'm telling you. The papers had been full of his disappearance for a month. For a month, so to speak, he'd been walking in his sleep. Twas my rap that woke him up. He was one of the best-known preachers of the West. There was a fellow in my country named Odin, said Swan, and they tell a lot of stories about him. He was something like that, going around in disguise and giving presents, and also the other way around. He got a lot of people hung and finally got hung himself on a tree. What I'm trying to get at, said Kavanaugh, is who was it or what was it that was using the preacher's body, you might say, to go around in? The preacher himself? It wasn't the preacher who tried the door, now, was it? And tried to give me the dirk? I guess maybe not. Then who and what? And where was the preacher himself all this time? Of course, we're all like that to some extent, Kavanaugh. We all got our good points and our bad points, our good days and our bad days. I've known days when I wanted nothing so much in the world as to take one good wallop at my old woman. And yet, she's as good a wife as any, since twenty-three years come August. That's only natural. But as I was saying, here's Mr. Witcherly. Off and on, you know, I hear a lot of gossip about him. Before his brother died, it was nip and tuck between them. Jacob doing things to make the people howl. Joseph coming around here and protesting in his quiet way. They all hated Jacob. They felt just the other way around for Joseph. Queer that there should be two brothers so different. Brothers are always different. Go on. Well, since Mr. Joseph's death, it seems as how every now and then Mr. Jacob takes an idea to do something, as you might say, and honor of Mr. Joseph's memory, to do something kind, like he done tonight. And then the first thing you know, he turns right around and gives the contrary orders. There's been a lot of talk. 
I'm wondering how he knew that I had a little girl named Mary. What about this Mary of his? Joseph's daughter. There's a touch of the queer there, too, in line with what I've been telling you. He's treated her rough. How so? Well, there was a nice young fellow working here that the girl was going to marry. Mr. Witcherly, Mr. Jacob Witcherly, that is, accused him of theft, had him jailed, and fired him. He should have fired him if he was a thief. But the boy wasn't a thief. The case never came to trial. Well, that proves nothing. Maybe not, but you didn't know this lad, a gentleman. And it appears that since then, I'm merely repeating what I hear, old J.C. has been following him up, making him lose other jobs. It's a dirty lie. Since the way he treated us tonight, I'd take my oath on it. And stranger yet, the way he's treated the girl herself, it appears that he's mad that she won't come to live with him. They do say is how that was an old quarrel J.C. had with his brother Joseph. Wanted Joseph and the girl to come and live with him in that big house of his up on Park Avenue. You know how he is, domineering. Must have his way. Goes crazy, and no disrespect meant when I say it, if anybody goes against him. He's a right to, tis his own affair. Yes, but they say not a month ago he up and sends the girl a check one day for ten thousand dollars. The next day he finds it out and damn near kills Grierson, that's his secretary, and he sends for the girl and raises Marielle. Says that he never sent her the money and that if he did it was a mistake and she turns it back to him, all except forty dollars she had spent. Poor. And she starts to pay that forty dollars back too. Three and four and five dollars at a time and him letting her do it. Maybe he slept in the moonlight. What's that? My old father used to say that if you slept with the moon on your face, there were evil spirits who would come into your brains. Those things don't happen anymore. They belong to the times when this fellow Odin I was telling you about was still alive. There are many ghosts in the world as ever, said Cavanaugh. Sniff that breeze. The wind is in the south. It smells like flowers, and when the wind smells like that, even here in ugly old New York, they say the little people are about. You'll have me believing in them things myself, said Swan. End of section 5